Alrighty, my game dev elves, now we are going to create the enemies. We are going to start from the easiest one, which is over here in the enemy sprites, we have the spider shooter. So this bad boy. So he only shoots, you know, spider webs. So we are going to go over here and change the sprite mode to multiple and hit apply. And let me just go here into the sprite editor and I'm going to slice him up. I'm going to S him up and I'm just going to rename this to spider bullet. There we go. And all of this here can be as is and I'm going to hit apply because why not? Why not? Okay. So I'm going to change or move this bad boy over here, but he is too big. I'm not going to leave him like this because it's too scary. You know, there are no big spiders like that. Imagine if they are this big, they will conquer the world. So I am going to set this spider shooter like this. And now we are going to attach a few, you know, components. The first one being the animator component, because we are going to have one animation, like he's, you know, moving or eating something or whatever. And we are going to have a box collider 2D, even though this is not necessary. But just in case we place him somewhere in the level where the player can hit him or something like that that's why I am going to you know attach a collider on him and basically so just check this to be a trigger because this collider is going to be a trigger and also over here in the tags we are going to create a new tag that I'm going to call the enemy tag and let me just select the spider shooter and attach the enemy tag on him and there you go so let's go over here inside of the animations and right click and I am going to create the enemy animations and for whatever reason it didn't create that folder so again enemy animations animations and right click again and over here we're going to create a new folder and this one is going to be spider shooter animations now inside of this one I'm going to right click and I am going to create a new animator controller that I'm going to call spider shooter controller and I am going to select this bad boy and attach that controller on his animator. So now that we have that out of the way, we can take the animator tab over here and we can create his animation. You can call it however you want to call it. We can call it, for example, idle or something like that and go over here into the sprites again and inside of the enemy sprites and simply take the shooter zero, one and two. And these are the animations for the spider shooter. So if I preview that, he, you know, looks like a crazy person. There you go. Look at that. He's like a crazy on meth spider so if I set the sample rate to 24 he looks a little bit better but still I am going to change this to I don't know let's say the speed can be some like 0.5 let me just go here and hit the play button so that we can preview this yeah 0.5 can do even I believe even 0.3 yeah 0.3 as well there you go so if I go here look at the spider that's all there is to it so this animation is going to stay at 0.3 now, when it comes to the bullet, this is that bullet. So we are going to set a capsule collider on him. There you go. We're also going to make this a trigger and I'm going to attach a rigid body on it because we want gravity to be applied on this bad boy. And let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, or even let's say 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So 0 0.3, 0 0.3, something like that, I believe can do. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So 0.3 can be so 0.3 can be the size of this bullet. Now we do need to go over here inside of the prefabs and right click and create a new folder for the enemy prefabs. So enemy prefabs. And over here I'm going to drag the spider bullet. But before that, when let me also tag it with the enemy tag because that is going to be essential in order to detect if we have collided with the player or not. If you like this tutorial series and you would like to learn more about game development, you can do that in my Game Development Academy where I have more comprehensive tutorials, more detailed tutorials, where I teach you more advanced stuff than in this tutorial. Link is down below for a small monthly fee. You can support this cause and you can learn something. Click the link down below and check it out. Now, when it comes to the script, we are going to go here inside of the scripts folder and right click. And over here, I am going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it enemy script. So enemy scripts. There you go. And by the way, everything that we did so far are basic things that uh, in the beginning of this course series, I have asked you to know. So you should know what is a collider, how to animate and all of the good stuff, even though I'm still explaining things along the way. But over here for the script, we are going to create a spider shooter script and attach it on the spider itself. So go over here and come on and attach it on the spider and double click it and open it over here. You know the drill, you know me. What can I say? I am crazy like that. I, I can sing you. 
there you go, we have finished. Thank you, $5 for the song. Anyways, what we are going to do inside of this script is that we are going to get a reference. So we are going to get a reference to the private game object. We're going to have our spider bullet. There you go, which is the initial bullet that we are going to use in order for us to shoot. We're also going to have a serialized field and this one is going to be a private transform and this is going to be the bullet spawn position, but we still did not create that. And this basically from where we are going to spawn the bullet. So we need to select the spider shooter over here and right click and create an empty game object. This is going to be the bullet spawn position. There you go. And if I zoom in a little bit, so when I press F, it should zoom in, but for whatever reason, it's not. So somewhere around here from the middle of his mouth, yeah, you like that from the middle of the mouth. There you go. So from the middle of the mouth of the spider, we are going to start to spawn the bullets. So let's go back. Next, we are in stupid me, I can attach everything. So I need to attach the bullet spawn position over here. And for the bullet spawn or for the spider bullet over here from the assets, I'm going to attach the spider bullet. There you go. So the prefab or otherwise this will not work. Next, we are going to have a serialized field that this one is going to be a private float minimum shoot weight time, which is equal to one and the maximum shoot weight time, which is equal to three. Basically, I'm going to use a random range between these two values to determine how long we are going to wait before we shoot. So we're not going to shoot every single second, every single frame or whatnot. We are going to shoot every frame intervals. So every frame intervals. So over here, I'm going to say private float wait time, which is going to be the variable that we are going to use to determine, you know, the wait time for our shooting. And in the update function, we are going to test if the time that time is greater than the wait time. And if you don't know what time that time is, it's basically if I hover over, this is the time in seconds since the start of the game. So if we are playing the game for five minutes, then this time that time value is going to be 300. So basically time in seconds since we started the game and it's going to continue to grow. So every second we spend in the game, this time that time is going to have a greater value. So we can use it to create timers. It's a really, really nice way to create timers. Now somebody's going to say, but why didn't you use coroutines? Why didn't you use invoke? You can use both of those. But in terms of performance, this one outperforms all of that. But you can use both. And of course, there are specific situations where you're going to use coroutines, where you're going to use invoke and so on and so forth. And even I use it in this, in this mini course. So yeah, that's your answer. Now over here, we are going to call a function. So void shoot which is simply going to instantiate and we're going to instantiate the spider bullet at the spider bullet or the spawn point. So spawn, bullet spawn position, that position using quaternion identity. So instantiate is going to create a copy out of this prefab that we have provided over here. It is going to spawn it at this position using this rotation. So we're simply going to call it over here. If I were to call this function right now, I'm not going to risk it. I believe it is going to, you know, the, my unit is going to block and I will have to restart this video or basically pause it until I turn it on again and so on and so forth. But basically we need a way to tell that the wait time is over. Over here in the start function, we are going to set that wait time to be equal to the time dot time plus the random range. So range between the minimum shoot wait time and the maximum shoot wait time. And we're going to do the exact same thing over here. So there you go. So as soon as we start the game, we are going to set the wait time to be the current value of the time dot time plus this value over here, the random range between one and three. Let's assume that the time dot time is currently zero and we add to it the random range between these two values. And let's assume that this random range will return three. That means three seconds. So wait time has a value of three seconds. So now we need to wait until time dot time gets to a value greater than three seconds. And when it does, then we're going to shoot. But before that, we are going to set a new value for the wait time. Let's assume now it's three seconds and this again, this random range again returns three seconds. So now wait time has a value of six 
which means again we need to wait until this value gets to the value that is greater than six and there you go this is what we are doing so this is basic code this is really basic code but we're just utilizing the logic so if i hit the play button we're going to see every time interval how the spider there you go one shoot second shoot there you go third shoot there you go fourth shoot there you go now I was going to leave this basically at the somewhat at the end but I need to do it right now as you saw that the bullets when they were spawned they were behind the ground well for that we are going to go here inside of the sprite renderer and I'm going to create sorting layers so we are going to have the enemy sorting layer so enemy we're also going to have the player sorting layer so player Put the player on the player sorting layer the enemy is going to be on the enemy sorting layer there you go also make sure that you go over here and apply this change to the prefab of the player and also here the bullet of the enemy so the spider bullet should also be on the enemy layer which means he will be rendered now on top so right now he will be rendered on top of the ground so if i go here pay attention now when we fire there you go he's rendered on top of the ground now, if you don't know what are sorting layers, basically they will determine the order by which a uh, game object is rendered. So for example, if I move this right here, because the ground is on the default sorting layer and the spider is on the enemy, then the ground is rendered behind. If I set the ground on the player layer, notice, there you go, it is rendered on top of the enemy. So the higher the order in this sorting layers, when you click here, add sorting layer, the higher the order, you can rearrange them as you can see. So this one that is here, basically the bottom one will be rendered first, then this one will be rendered behind and so on and so forth. So this is in short, what are sorting layers? If something is not clear so far, what we did when it comes to this lecture, make sure that you ask in the comment down below, but we do have one problem over here. And that is notice that when we shoot these bullets, they are persistent in the game. Look at this bullet. So this bullet is look, it's simply in the game. Look at that. You see, it's still in the game. You can see there is one bullet. There you go. It's falling down until infinity, you know? So this is not good because they are piling up. Look at here. They're piling up in our, you know, hierarchy, which means basically when you're playing the game, it is piling up in your game. You don't see it, but eventually it's going to clutter the memory of your game. Your game can become unresponsive. It can even, you know, the system will kill your game depending on where you're playing it. On a computer, not likely, but on a mobile for sure. So what we're going to do is quickly go here in the scripts folder and inside of the enemy scripts and right click over here. And I'm going to create a class that I'm going to call the activate object. And what this is going to do, it's simply going to have a timer and when it is going to deactivate, you know, the game object. So over here, we're going to have a private float deactivate so deactivate timer which is three seconds by default and then over here we are going to have a void deactivate so deactivate game object and this is a function that we are going to call and simply what we are going to say here if the game object is active in the hierarchy then we are going to deactivate it so over here we're going to deactivate it and what did i do so if game object is active so game object active in hierarchy there we go i thought that we have an error over here so if it's active first things first we're going to destroy it so destroy game object there you go and we are going to call this in the start by using invoke and there you go i'm using invoke this time so over here invoke this function name after the deactivate timer so what this invoke is going to do it's basically going to call this function with the function name that we have provided and it is going to call it after this many seconds which currently is three so essentially invoke is going to call deactivate game object after three seconds and this function is going to go here and it's going to test if the game object is active in the hierarchy and it is going to destroy it if it is. Now we do need to go here and attach this on the bullet. So I'm quickly going to go here, prefabs and the spider bullet and attach the deactivate game object. So now if I hit the play button, you will notice that after three seconds, 
So there you go, we have it. And notice I have paused the game and I have selected the spider bullet. Let me select the second one. So this one over here. It is spawned, you see it. Let us wait for three seconds and then three, two, one. Look at now, it is simply removed from the hierarchy. I don't have it anymore. There you go, look at that. So they reach up to here when they are spawned. Look at that. So they reach up to here and then they simply disappear. Well, this is, they, they are simply being destroyed. That's all there is to it. They are simply being destroyed. Okay, so... Uh, just kidding. But anyways, this is one part of the spider shooter. I'm going to take him and put him over here. I said one part because I want to give you one assignment that I'm hoping that you will complete and post your results down below in the comment section. Of course, you can post some links to websites where you attached your script or you can post, maybe you create a YouTube video of your own, post it on your channel, put, paste it down below so that we can see what you did. And yeah, because don't copy paste your code in the comment, it will be too large. What is my, or what do I want? Well, basically over here, we're using instantiate and destroy. Look at this, spider shooter, we're instantiating bullets every single time, and then we're using destroy. Now, this can work for this game, especially this is a small game, it can work, no problems, no biggies, but if we have a larger game where we shoot multiple bullets, let's say 10 bullets per five seconds or 10 seconds or whatever, we shoot them and so on and so forth, well, that can get a little bit tedious, especially on mobile devices. So there is something called pooling that we can use to fix that issue. If you don't know what it is, look it up and try to create something on your own. Try to create a pooling effect that will spawn the game objects. What I'm going to do in the next video, I'm going to create that for you. So give you the solution for the assignment, but I'm not going to pre-script it. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to do it from my head. So I'm going to just turn on the camera, start recording, and I'm going to do that from my head. And let's see what it comes out. So I can make mistakes. I will probably make mistakes. You will see me fixing them and so on and so forth. This is one of the things that I incorporate in my courses, which I found people love because I show you directly how I solve problems. And if I have bugs, how I solve them and so on and so forth. If you want to learn in depth more about that, you have my courses, link is down below. But I will do, you know, that starting from the next video. If something was not clear, and these are all basic things that don't require that don't require explanation. This right here will tell us if the game object is active in the hierarchy or not. Anyways, you get the point. And starting from the next video, we will create a pooling for this. And I will see you guys then.